Hello, and my name is Justin Patterson. I'm with QTE Manufacturing Solutions. And today I want to show you a quick little demo of the advantages, one of the advantages uh, to getting the OptiRough style toolpath. Uh, to give a quick little synopsis of the difference between an OptiRough and a 2D Dynamic. Uh, 2D Dynamic is a 2D toolpath. That comes with your mill level two, your entry level uh, master cam mill. Uh, it looks at everything in a two-dimensional fashion. I mean, we look straight down at the part. There can be no contour. It, it's all driven by wireframe, so we'd have to create wireframe. You can drive a solid. I mean, but it, it's not, you can drive solid edges, not so much a solid. I still would have to pick the edges that contain the toolpath. But it looks at everything in a two-dimensional state, meaning I'm going to cut this level dynamically, and then I can do a depth of cut, go down to the next Z level, uh, and do dynamic, but it, where OptiRough comes into play, OptiRough is a three-dimensional uh, roughing, excuse me, tool path. It's where you can have a 3D part that has, you know, contoured surfaces on it, um, angled walls, anything, and it'll actually drive the solid model, the actual faces of a, a solid model or surfaces to where it can create step-ups. It will rough the part real close to being done now going and going finishing it is, is is pretty much a breeze but that's where most people think when you need opti rough is for three-dimensional parts in the case of this part i wanted to show you this is where opti rough is also used as a very good time saver on the programming side of things this part here is a 2d part this does not require an opti rough meaning there's no con you know uh contour contoured surfaces uh, nothing along those lines. This is just simply different levels. Cuts at all different levels of this part. So I kind of want to show you how the OptiRough toolpath can really speed up the programming time for this part. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a bit of pockets in here. There's there's a lot of features that we're looking at. And I'm going to throw a couple dynamic toolpaths on this really fast, but uh, it's going to show using the new um, the new solids chaining manager inside of master Kim 2020 i'm not going to go into very big detail it's really these four options here open edges outer edges bosses and cavities if it's something you're interested in there's actually a video i made a while back that's on our website that uses this exact same part explaining a little more in detail of the chaining manager uh that's new in 2020 along with the whole selection uh so if that's something you're interested in head on over to our website and kind of check that video out that'd be a good one to kind of look at but for this, I'm just going to throw some quick tool paths on here, um, just standard 2D, to kind of put into perspective how long this would take. Uh, the thing with a 2D dynamic tool path is you have to pick features that do not overlap other features, if, if that's what I mean. Like if you think I would like to do this, as many of these as I could at one time, but I have to do these features first, these pockets. I could probably throw these in there too. Anything that's a pocket, I could probably do a, a lot more than that, but I can't. I have to do this first before I can do this step because this step overlaps. So that's the downfall with a 2D dynamic. You got to be very selective on on where you're roughing. Okay, so we're gonna do stay inside. Uh, that's really all I need. Um, half inch flat will work. Let's just bump this up to a 25% step over. You can see I'm leaving 30 thousandths on the wall. Let's go up to an inch and a half um, depth of cut. Okay, linking parameters. The way I'm setting this up is I'm picking the bottom of every feature I want to machine, so I can leave the depth at an incremental zero. So I don't need to go in and really change much throughout the tool pass. It's just reselect and jump. So this can turn pretty fast, but you'll see the advantage of an opti rough. Uh, top stock is just the top, and then I'm going to turn my arc filters uh, since I'm leaving. 30, I'm going to go to 15, and we can go ahead and we can always turn that on to there. So let's regen this first tool path. And you can see we went and did these pockets. So uh, again, this is the downfall with a 2D dynamic. Is I've got to be very selective and remember what I've machined. You're probably going to want to use a, a stock model a little more frequently to kind of get a good visual of where we're at in this process. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just throw a couple of these on here like this and this, okay? Uh, and the next one we'll do is the other advantage with 2020 is they allowed for op multiple 
open air chains. So this will really make this pretty nice. I can go here to this open edges and pick this face and it picks just the open edges. This again, like I said, I go through in that the, the chaining video I made, open edges. Okay, perfect. So you can see this is going a lot faster. I just need to change this from outside and all I need to do is green check because remember I'm setting everything the way I want. Okay, we'll just we'll just throw one more quick one on here. So now that I've done these, I can start to do these pockets because they, remember they cannot overlap each other. So now I can go, let's just throw, let's just throw these on there real quick, something like that. Okay, and we'll go do our air regions again. You, 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 and you. Okay, as you can see. check it, it'll bark at you um I, i'm it'll it'll give you a warning if not really a warning it just it won't cut correctly and i bet i know if i go in and cut this and this and this all together it looks at that really weird and that that's again the downfall with a with a, a 2d dynamic is you've got to be very selective um, on where you pick so I'll, I'll just use this as a quick example to show you again i'm not saying this this is not an achievable process because it very well is. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, money's money. And if, if you can't afford something, then I definitely say keep going with what you need to do. So we'll go here. We're going to set our air chains. Okay, let's go here, here. See, so this should work because those are all, they don't overlap each other, but it's just sometimes they get themselves confused. Let's look at a preview chain here. And see what I mean? It, it doesn't know what to do with all of that. So as you can kind of see, it cuts into the part. So that's kind of the downfall is you got to be very selective. You got to really pay attention to what's going on doing it this fashion. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let's do an OptiRef. The only thing I want to do on the OptiRef is because I don't, I don't want to do the outside of the part. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to create myself a new level to throw a containment chain on. Just real simple, just wireframe. Uh, let's actually go to 2D. Let's make sure we set our Z depth up a little higher. Okay. Oh, I put the wrong one. Let's go here. There we go. That'll work. Let's go back to our top view. And all we need to do for our containment, let's just go pick a silhouette boundary. Okay. Let's pick our part. Green check. And there we go. There's a good containment boundary that'll that'll get us set up for our OptiRough. So now all I'm doing is going into OptiRough. Okay, here's our OptiRough toolpath. I'm going to say zero on the floor, and I'm going to leave it to 30 like I did uh, on the 2D. I'm going to go to my selection. I'm going to triple click to select the whole entire part. And as you can see, it selects the whole part. Where I don't care about the bottom because I am going to go select a boundary chain of you of the outside of this part right there, that one we just created. That way we can stay inside of that. But I can still strategize from the outside. I'm just saying keep everything inside of you. So same tool, same everything, 25. This is where an OptiRough comes into a little bit. It's allowing it to do step ups. Now I usually leave it about 10 or 15%. It's not, it's not gonna do a step up every 15, or every 75 thousandths. It's just, it's, it's telling it to go this full depth inch and a half and then look at everything from the zero to inch and a half mark and go back and recut those. And this will make complete sense here in a second. Um, linking parameters look good. And then looks like I already have all that set. Okay, let's go ahead and generate this toolpath. Now this is the downfall with an OptiRough is the regeneration time or the generation time sometimes takes a lot more depending on how, how complex your your toolpath is, but again, I'm not having to pick all these pockets and remember which one I've done, which one I've already did, and all that stuff. So, um, pulling up the multi-threading manager and setting this to real time sometimes will speed this process up, and you can kind of see it's it's helping a little bit. But I mean, this is a, a big advantage to Opti. You're 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 letting it look at the whole entire model instead of bits and pieces of the part. Uh, you're saying, okay, I only want you to look here by selecting this geometry. We're actually giving them the whole model. And there you go. There's the whole entire toolpath that runs the whole part. So as you can see, it'll go all the way down. It machines itself all the way down. And it's the same. It's going to do the same thing that 
your standard 2D dynamic did. I went, it went down the whole inch and a half depth, the full depth right there, and it's doing as much as it can. Now you're seeing it start to do these step ups where it goes and does these other features that fall between the inch and a half and zero mark. It'll do the whole entire zero to inch and a half of the part and then drop down and do inch and a half past that. But this is a good example to kind of show you how quick you can rough this part. Even though this is a standard 2D part, this is a, a good example. So I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, uh, the support staff is, is here to take your calls, emails. Uh, you can email us at uh, support at qtemfg.com or give us a call, and we'd be happy to help you with any of your issues. Have a good one.